What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, Blind OS Command Injection with Time Delays. This lab contains a Blind OS Command Injection vulnerability in the feedback function. This application executes a shell command containing the user supplied details. The output from the command is not returned in the response. So this is why it's referred to as Blind OS Command Injection. We're running an OS level command we're not seeing the output, but we're able to demonstrate that that command was executed by the fact that there's going to be a time delay. To solve the lab, exploit the blind OS command injection vulnerability to cause a 10 second delay. So we know the vulnerability is in the submit feedback functionality. Let's start by checking out this information. I'm just going to fill out the arbitrary fields here, subject, feedback, message, feedback. Let's choose submit feedback, and we'll take a look at the corresponding post request in burp. So here is the post request in burp. We can see as part of the post request body, we have all of the parameters that we entered into the submit feedback form. It's basically sending an email to the web app that's taking our email and using it as the from address for the email that's being sent. Now there are safe ways of sending emails from a web app, but in this particular case, user input is directly generating an OS level command. Now we have no way of automatically knowing this. It's something that we may eventually figure out as we're testing a web app. The reason why we can say in this case that an OS level command is being generated is because it's heavily hinted at in the lab guidelines. And we even have a sample command given to us and it makes use of the Linux mail command. So we have the mail command hyphen S. So this is going to set a subject we have dash A, this is going to set headers. So you can see we have a from header as part of the email that's being sent. And in this field, we'll have the injected user email that's provided as part of that submit feedback form. So you can see we are directly injecting into a Linux command by providing our email because that's going to be used as the header value. And finally, just to finish off the command, we have a space and we have the destination of the email. Now it turns out that the mail command won't work without a destination email. If we don't provide a destination email, it's going to error out. Now the reason why this is relevant is because we can make use of the Linux OR operator. The idea behind the OR operator as a quick recap, it's a double pipe character. And if the command we inject before the double pipe character is not successful, for example, if command one errors out, then command two is going to be executed. Whereas if command one is successful, then command two is never executed. Now let's think about where we're injecting into this. We have control over this email field. So let's imagine that we just provide an arbitrary value for our email. And then immediately afterwards, we're going to inject into this with the double pipe character. And we're essentially saying, if the first command doesn't work, perform this second command that we're about to inject. Well, let's look at that first command. It's actually the mail command, but there's no longer a destination being included as part of that command. In other words, this is almost definitely going to error out, which means we're going to be moving on to the command that we inject after the OR operator. So what kind of command do we want to inject here? Well, we want to provoke a delay. And one of the ways we can do that is by making use of the ping command. By default, it's going to be an ICMP echo request and we can specify the number of packets with dash C. We can then provide the address to be pinged. Localhost is sufficient in this case, 127.0.0.1. Now it does mention in the lab guidelines that this is going to induce a delay of 10 seconds. More specifically, we're sending 10 packets and the default is to send a packet per second. So assuming there are no additional delays, it's going to result in a 10 second delay. We do of course have the rest of the command here. And as you can imagine, this could be invalidating our ping command. So the way we can simply solve that is by providing another OR operator after our ping command. This way, this trailing text is never going to be executed as a command. Since the ping command is hopefully executed successfully, then everything else after the OR operator is just going to be ignored. So the end result here is that we should just be executing ping 10 packets to localhost and nothing else. So we're back now at our request in the repeater. So let's delete our email. We'll just specify the email equals X, which may be unnecessary. We're then going to input the OR operator. We're then going to input the OR operator and the command is going to be ping. We're going to URL encode our spaces with the plus sign. So ping dash C plus 10 for 10 packets, another space 127.0.0.1. And we're going to conclude with the double pipe character. Let's send that to the back end. 
and you can see we don't get any kind of response. That's because right now those 10 ICMP echo packets are being sent to the backend. We're not going to receive a response until that command is complete and it takes around 10 seconds with one echo packet per second. So although we can't access the output at this stage, we've proved that we're able to inject commands into the underlying operating system. And as we'll go on to see in the next Port Swigger Lab, there are techniques that we could potentially use to retrieve this information. For example, it may be possible with the same Linux command to write the output to a file, or we can make use of what's known as an out of band interaction to extract the response from the underlying operating system request. If we head back to the lab itself, you can see we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lab. Mitigation for OS command injection is generally the same every time. We shouldn't be using user input directly in an OS level command. So it's fine to take data from the user. We have to do that as part of functionality in many web apps, but we need to make sure that that data is sanitized, whitelisted. We can't just be using it directly as part of an underlying operating system command. All right, thanks very much for checking out the content. Hope it was helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next lap.